Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Sunday, coming at you with some 2022 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition 12 box pick your team 16. We've got an HTA case in the store right now uh, in a team random filler if you want to get into that. And then a fresh case, we, uh, the next case of Hobby is loaded up as well if you want to run that back tonight. Big thanks everybody here for making it happen. If you got a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that spot in the team random filler for this break. It was only an eight team team random, which was nice. And Gary ended up with last spot mojo with the Seattle Mariners. Good luck. So they, they say, so they say, 70% of the time, last spot mojo hits 100% of the time. All right, so fresh sealed case. Thanks everybody for making this happen. I appreciate it. Again, we got the HTA Choice Edition in its last filler, if you want to make that happen. And then we've got another fresh case of Hobby loaded up as well. With a little bit of luck, we might be able to get another one done tonight. Oh, let me, sorry. Let me just take this out of my inventory system here. Excellent. We've got two autographs per box, one per mini box. Now, I, the, uh, the big news... We do have some baseball news to talk about. The big news over the weekend, and I wasn't here to discuss this with you, but Jacob deGrom, what, is that, what does everyone think about that? Jacob deGrom signing a five-year deal. I didn't think he'd get five, but a five-year deal. And he's going to the Rangers. Five-year, $185 million. So that's an average, let me just do some quick math here, 185 divided by 5, that's an average annual value of $37 million a year. So Aaron's thing, if the Rangers get a couple more pieces, they'll be good. Yeah, they, they kind of underperformed with the, uh, after signing, you know, Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager and John Gray to those big deals. TJ thinks it's cheap. You think do you think Jacob DeGrom's worth more? I thought I thought no one was gonna give him more than three or four years. I guess Rangers went with the extra that extra year. Kind of hoping the Dodgers would, would be able to get him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if the Rangers get a little more starting pitching, first base, left field, oof. that's going to be that's going to be a pretty dangerous team, I think. All right, our first autograph is for the Mariners, Charlie Welch. That is for Gary and the M's. Ooh, I would love to see the Dodgers get Carlos Rodon, TJ. There's Jay Allen, 181 out of 199. And play some more of the kids, I think, right, TJ? I don't know about you, but I, I think they gotta play a little more of the kids. Let's just see what they got. Get some young, hungry guys on that team. Fire people up, you know? But yeah, if they get Carlos Rodon up there, they get a healthy Dustin May. 
Julio Urias. I know Kershaw's going to sign another one-year deal soon. There's Kettle Marte. There's Willie Velasquez, or Vasquez, that is, for Tampa Bay. That'll be for Dan. I'd like to see that. I think that'd be pretty nice. Yeah, I thought I thought someone would take a, a a flyer on on Cody Bellinger rather quickly, but no, they're no one signed Cody Bellinger yet. There's Joey Weimer, eighty one out of two fifty. I wonder if he'll be a reclamation project for somebody, or if the Dodgers will, if the market dries up on uh, Cody Bellinger. He's still a pretty elite defender. Right? I think a team like the like the Rangers, Aaron, wouldn't mind something like that. Put an elite defender out there in the outfield and then maybe some upside in that he could regain some of his MVP form back on a one-year deal or something. All right, that was the first box. Not a bad start. We'll do an autograph recap at the end of this break as well. So the uh, so MLB trade rumors .com using some reports so using some official reports I like how they kind of aggregate all that together in a accurate way um, no trade clause fully guaranteed conditional option for 2028 that could take its total value up to 222 million dollars. It's the biggest move, yeah, biggest move of the offseason to date as the Rangers commit to more than half a billion dollars to the trio of Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, John Gray. Right, and they needed someone at the top of the rotation behind John Gray and Martin Perez. Right, as Aaron was saying, if they could add like one more, like a solid middle of the rotation guy piece in there too. Maybe see if they got some youngsters they can call up or some diamonds in the rough they can generate from... You know, just from free agency and minimum deals, that could be interesting. Also, the conditional option comes into play. This is a report from today. If DeGrom undergoes a Tommy John surgery or any sort of right elbow shoulder injury during the 2023-2026 seasons that keeps him on the injury list for 130 days consecutively during any season, or 186 days in a row during any service period. Interesting, little little injury clause there. And then some bonuses for innings pitched and Cy Young finishes. And so there you go. TJ's reporting that Bellinger has been staying here in Oklahoma last week working with Josh Holiday, Matt's brother, OSU coach, on his swing. Interesting. There's Sebastian Espino, autograph for the Bluebirds. That's going to go to Michael Schroeder. Got the Blue Jays straight up. Thanks, Mike. There's Jonathan Mejia to 75 for the Cardinals. That's going to go to Casey. There's Roderick Arias for the Yankees. That goes to Mark. Seven out of seventy-five, by the way. Did you know Fred McGriff got elected? You know what? I was just—I heard you talking about it. I just noticed it on on my little news here. I didn't even know there was a he, thing today. He got—I uh, think it's—is that Veterans, the Veterans Committee? Committee? Yeah, I think Veterans Committee got got the crime dog into the Hall of Fame. Speckle autograph to two ninety-nine. Isaac De Leon. For Aaron and the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, I think Bellinger's in a unique spot. I don't know how many teams are, you know, how many teams are going to invest too much money into him. 
unless they really think that they can you know they see something where they feel like they can fix their fix his swing or or something like that Dodgers are usually one of the best in the league at at um, at you know reclamation projects but he had, that hasn't quite worked with with Bellinger so maybe a change of scenery but I don't know he's still a pretty pretty big fan favorite in spite of his struggles got a bobblehead last this past season in spite of not having a good season before or a good season then so so he's still pretty popular teammates are fond of him you know pretty pretty loose easy going personality I don't know if the Dodgers sign him for like a year let him get his swing back uses uh, he might benefit from the new changes new rules next year no shift that might help him a little bit and with his speed if he gets on base, if he works on, you know, if the swing's not working, if he can still get on base, and he he has has a pretty good eye. He has been a willing willing uh willing to take the walk. He can use his speed to seal more bases. The bases are increasing by about what an inch or something like that. The actual size of the base is expanding. They're also moving second base in by, what, a few feet, I think. Still going to be 90 feet, but the way that, there's an article on it, it's still going to be 90 feet to each base, but geometrically the, it might, the angles are a little different. There's Daniel Cueva. 19 out of 150. Blue Lava, Chris Butler, Texas. Kyle Tucker. Green. 8 out of 99 for Houston. That's going to be for Steven. And by the way, these shimmer parallels, you probably know by now, we're at break 16 here, but if you're new to this, the shimmer parallels are not numbered, which is why I'm breezing by those. But they are, um, they, they will ship, all cards ship. There's Julio Rodriguez, Jason Cuero, Ryan Doncone, Dodgers, Jorge. Of course, his brother Jackson Cuero, a big chase for the uh, Brew Crew as well. Christian Vaccaro, also one of the prospects that we're chasing. Henry Davis, former number one overall pick, to uh, 499. I want to say Henry Davis went to the same college as Dodgers catcher Will Smith. Do they both go to Louisville, I think? Pirates, that's going to be for Brian. Are they becoming a, uh, a catcher factory? All right, fourth box. Yeah, so that, that, that DeGrom deal is the big one. Chris Bassett looking for a four-year deal. A's moving closer to a Sean Murphy trade with the Braves not the acquiring team. Our, uh, our Cardinals correspondent, Sam Banks, was saying earlier that uh, it's going to be the Cardinals. Red Sox apparently have not made a competitive offer to Xander Bogarts. Why not? Astros interested in Andrew Benintendi. Marlins won't trade Sandy Alcantara, but open to other options or other offers.
Red Sox signing uh, Chris Martin to a two-year deal. Mariners are crying Colton. These are all weekend deals. Colton Wong for Jesse Winker and Abraham Toro. All right, interesting. That should shore up that second base spot that they wanted. I think all of these are deals we've already discussed, some of these other ones here. And I think... I think this bit of news we saw already, Ken Rosenthal is saying that it appears increasingly likely Aaron Judge will land a nine-year deal in this next one. All right, so according to... Well, according to a number of reports, Sports Illustrated included saying five-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger, 1995 World Champ and 1994 All-Star Game MVP. Fred McGriff has been voted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame Museum by the Contemporary Baseball Era Players Committee. It's what it's called. I guess casually known. There's Matt Manning. Casually known as the Veterans Committee. Do we like this? Is this well-deserved or no? I feel like for a veterans committee pick that I feel like that makes sense. Here's for the Red Sox. Here's Sedan Rafaela, 91 out of 499 refractor autograph for Chris Butler. Blaze Jordan, another one for the Red Sox. Not 219 out of 250 for Chris. No, none yet, Taz. There is a Shimmer Roderick Arias, though. There was a base one earlier. No Brewers. Not yet, anyway, but we're only just finishing the first third of the case. So we've got a ways to go. There's the Denzer Guzman, 45 out of 60, or a 50, that is, gold parallel. And there's a Juan Bin Cho. To 299, 205 to 299, speckle autograph for Casey and the Cardinals. A Korean player who I think, uh, yeah, was a was picked up out of high school. And this one's for the Angels. That'll be for Jacob. Robert Hassel, former uh, top 10 pick here to 299. Oh, there's another Arias. Tyler Evans, do you like that Cho pull? All right, first third of the case in the books. Next third coming up. Yeah, I was gonna say not too many, not too many Asian hitters that are getting drafted out of high school. So they must really have seen something in them. Everyone's good with the crime dog getting in, veterans committee style. Yeah, he, he's, in, he's in the hall of very great. He'd be borderline hall of famer, but the veterans committee saw it fit that he gets out there. Now, he's a top three chasing this product for you? 
We don't have them as a top three chase in this product, but. But, uh, all right, that's good news. I like it. I like to hear that. What's up, Mark? Yes. Happy Monday. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Monday to me. TJ says he's, he deserves it. 284 batting average, 2,490 hits, 493 home runs, 15, over 1,500 RBIs, 72 stolen runs. A OPS of 886. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll bet if he hit some miles, I mean, if, I'll bet if he hit 500 home runs, which he was only seven homers short of, I'll, I'll bet he might have been a late ballot pickup. And if he knocked out like an MVP or two, he hasn't, he'd never knocked out an MVP. Top 17, top six, top 10, top 10, top six, top four in the early 90s. And then with that, that's with San Diego. Then a couple seasons into his Atlanta career, top eight finish, top 20 finish. Maybe if he was more perennially an, an all-star, that might have changed things a little bit in the, in the narrative. He retired in 04. I'll bet if he retired a little bit later, he might have benefited from more, from more help from advanced stats and stuff like that too. There's the 499. Yeah, Henry just thinks he deserves it. There's MJ Melendez for the Royals. That'll be for Edgar. And there is Willie Vasquez, 38 out of 499. For Dan and the Rays. There's Jay Allen, Atomic to 150. Yeah, I think you're right, Henry. If if he had hit that you know, those milestone numbers like five hundred, if people saw five in front of this guy's name. You know, I feel like I feel like that might have been a little different. Voting wise, it seemed like he was trending in the right direction. There's Colson Montgomery, Green Shimmer. And there's C D Lamb with a touchdown. Uh Henry, there you go, White Sox with a parallel. And yeah, Terry saying crime dog for sure deserved to be in. And here's Andy Thomas, another Mariner for the last spot mojo, Gary. And the Mariners. Maybe we can find a low number Julio Rodriguez parallel. That'd be cool too. We've seen some base. There's Marcelo Meyer. 007 to 125. That goes to Chris and the Red Sox. There's a Yankil Fernandez. They're looking out for him too. Torkelson rookie card or Yasser Mercedes. That was the first box of the second third of this case. Next box. Yeah, I think Hall of Fame ballot-wise, he was trending in the right direction. It was as low as 11.7% in his 2014 ballot, which was 1, 2, 3, 4, his fifth year. The next year, 12.9, not super impressive. But then the year after that, 2016, 20.9%. year after that, 21.7%. year after that... 23.2% and then his final ballot, 39.8%. How many percent do you need? I forget. But he was trending in the right direction. Interesting. Henry wonders if McGriff goes in as a J or a Brave. I would think the Braves because he won a World Series with them. And they, he spent about the same amount of seasons. Well, actually, he spent five seasons with the, uh, with the Rays, five seasons with the Braves, and five seasons with Toronto. 
maybe that's another thing that might kind of sort of ding his his Hall of Fame legacy a little bit that he did bounce around a little bit. Maybe if he stayed with the same team with a same team for like ten years, maybe a little more, maybe a little different. Although maybe that maybe it should help, right? Different teams. It's a Baseball Writers of America. He he, uh, you know, saw some different beat writers every day. I guess base, baseball reference considers it four seasons, but I think there was a he got traded in the middle of the his Padres to Braves time right there. So, but they round up. Yeah, Watchy goes in as a Padre. And there is B.J. Murray Jr. One fifty six out of two fifty. That will go to Joe and the Cubs. Didn't Dave Winfield go in as a Padre? It's a 499 refractor. I think because of his long standing, you know, bitterness with the Yankees organization. There's Jordan Alvarez to 250. Steven with Houston. O'Neill Cruz for the Pirates. That'll be for Brian B. And there's Nelson uh, Velasquez, 62 out of 250, purple shimmer for the Cubbies, Joe. And there's another Cub, Liam Spence. That's for Joe, Simone, and the Cubs. I should have looked that up. I went to the Baseball Hall of Fame over the summer. There's Jason Dominguez, Speckle, to 299. I saw Dave Win Winfield's plaque, but I don't know if I paid attention to it or snapped a picture of it. I didn't see what hat he was wearing. No, I don't think Ken Caminiti is a Hall of Famer. He might be a Padres Hall of Famer, but not a, I don't think he's a baseball Hall of Famer. But I think they've got this weird Padres. I feel like have a weird, uh, a weird distinction of having players that started with the Padres, who ended up leaving and then ended up having Hall of Fame careers. I think Ozzy Smith, right, started with, started with the uh, Padres, but probably ended up being a Hall of Famer as a Cardinal. Right, Did Henry saying Dave Winfield's plaque has a San Diego hat, but the Hall of Fame write-up says New York as his primary team. But right, the plaque has him as a Padre, though. He's forever enshrined, and, and, and his plaque will forever be a San Diego Padre. I guess Winfield's the, the, the exception there. I feel like there's some other examples, too. All right, for the Astros, we got Emmanuel Valdez.
And that will be Steven. There you go. Terry saying Dave Winfield, first baseball player to be blah, 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 2001. Or Simon Juan, 80 out of 99. Now, I think, was it Dave Winfield or it was Wade Boggs, maybe? Someone, I think, was paid by the team to go in as that team's thing or something like that. So I think from there, probably from either Dave Winfield or maybe Wade Boggs. Did Boggs go in as a Devil Ray? No. no? Teddy's saying no. Teddy's a Boggs guy. Someone went to something as a team. And so they stopped it. I think they stopped having players. What, what, was that the thing that, that started it? Because now I don't think they let the players choose anymore. Yeah. I know that that was kind of, people were up in arms a little right. bit. Right. Maybe it wasn't a payment thing, but 37 out of 199, Shane Boz, Rays, Dave with that one. I forget the exact, I'll have to, someone will have to look that up. It's worth looking up. I think from, maybe it was Winfield then. I think from then on, they stopped allowing players to, to choose <laughs> their own teams. All right. There was a redemption hiding behind Miguel Cabrera, who's retired. Oh, it's upside down. Who is retiring after the 2023 season. And he's going to reveal a youngster who, who, may, who probably might not know who Miguel Cabrera is. Chrome rookie autograph gold parallel. Good luck, everybody. It is, oh, no, Spencer Torkelson definitely knows who Miguel Cabrera is. Nice. Who's got the Tigers? Jeremy. Jeremy Razor picked up the Tigers straight up in this break and gets the Torkelson. Rough rookie year. Hopefully he does, uh, he bounces back next year. All right, Xbox. So this is the last box of the middle third of this case. And then we'll get into the second half of the, or the final third of the case, that is. Now, winter meetings, are they starting today? The MLB winter meetings. I don't know when they are. It's soon though. Oh yeah, no, it is today. Sunday, December 4th. Thanks, TJ. Yeah. Sunday, December 4th through Wednesday, December 7th. So according to MLB rumor or MLB.com, the official site, A's nearing a deal for Sean Murphy. Cardinals, Guardians, Rays, Red Sox may be in the mix. Dansby Swanson, the Braves, still far apart. After locking down Jose Abreu for three years, the Astros may not be done, says Bob Nightingale. Clubs uh, reportedly reach out to Andrew Benintendi. A lot of, lot of rumors flying right here. Marlins listening on young starters except for Sandy Alcantara. They might try to leverage some of their, because they got some strong pitching. Might le leverage some of that starting pitching to get a little bit of hitting back. Verlander is Mets' top priority, according to a report. Mets looking at uh, Carlos Rodon as well. I'm sure a lot of teams interested in those, those two, two pitchers. Eight to nine teams 
in the mix for Rodon, whose market is, quote, heating up, especially after that DeGrom deal. And there's not too many free agent starting pitchers that are kind of out there. Yeah, maybe maybe Dansby Swanson trying to maybe reunited with the ATL. Yeah, that that's 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 a move. Yeah, I don't know if the Dodgers get Bogarts. I, I don't think that the Dodgers will be too active in free agency. There's two ninety one at two ninety nine, unless there's a player that wants to take shorter years for a higher average annual value. I think that's the sort of Raiders game. That Jeremy Pena going to the Astros, Steven. There's Adrian Sagasti for the Giants, Bill. Although I could see the Dodgers being a little active in the trade market though. I know there was some talk about trying to, um, Bill Norton, by the way, with the Giants. I know they've been trying to get or there's been some rumors linking them to the Brewers, I want to say. Nice Khalil Watson, speaking of the Marlins. That's a, that's a short print there for Jeremy and the Fish. He's on the box, too. And Dylan Carlson, purple for Car uh, Casey and the Cardinals to 250. I think the Dodgers are trying to maybe get Willie Ademis and maybe put Corbin Burns in the mix there. Make a little trade. That's possible. I know the Dodgers were looking at some of those Marlin starters. Deal didn't quite get done last summer, so maybe they'll be back in on maybe getting one of those, uh, those young Marlin starters that are pretty solid. There's Wilfred Veras, 265 to 499. Would love to see them get Radon though. Put that guy at the top of the rotation. Really shore that up. There's Jordani De Los Santos, 299. Wander Franco rookie card. And then get some of the hungry young hitters from the farm system. Call them up. Put it, throw them into the fire. Work through a little adversity. We'll see how they look by the end of the season. There's Eloy Jimenez to 150. It'll be for Henry and the White Sox. You know, guys like James Outman could be a regular for the Dodgers. Guys like Miguel Vargas would be interesting to see. Michael Bush. Call up some young pitchers. Bobby Miller, Gavin Stone, Pepio. You know, throw them into the regular rotation, especially while Walker Buehler is going to be out for the season. Maybe Mookie Betts is doing some recruiting for Xander Bogarts, though. He's like, hey, sign that short deal. Get a chance to win a ring. Add that to your resume. Get, take another bite at free agency in two or three seasons, and then see what happens. You'll be hitting in a great lineup. You're going to get a lot of great pitches to see. You can hang out with me here. Now. I don't know how close they are. I have no idea if they're friends or not, but... MLB.com has uh, eight can't-miss winter meeting predictions. Aaron Judge will make his decision in the next few days. That would be pretty fun. The Mets will make their post-DeGrom move. James and Tyon will sign as well. Phillies will sign a shortstop. They're chasing hard after those short, any one of those nice shortstops. A team that has never picked number one will win the draft lottery. All right. Apparently all 18 non-playoff teams from 2022 have a shot at number one with their percentage odds based on the final standings. There'll be two new Hall of Famers. McGriff is on the board. The catcher trade market will, uh, will begin to move. 
A lot of reliever moves. Apparently, the Dodgers are interested in J.D. Martinez. He'd be nice in that DH spot. Yeah, Harper got Tommy John. So he won't be back until maybe the middle of next season. I feel like position players will be able to come back from stuff like that a lot earlier, obviously. They're not, they're not using their arms to pitch. So their recovery times are a lot shorter, but, but yeah, he'll be missing a chunk of the season. Jose Ramirez, 279 out of 499. And Yerlin Confidant, 60 out of 100 atomic refractor for Casey and the Reds. Right, and yeah, and then I'll, I'll, I'm sure they'll just, they'll only stick him in DH next year. Probably to speed up the recovery. They'll be like, listen, you're only going to DH, and then you won't throw a baseball until the following season, and then we'll talk. Edie Cap, 54 out of 125. Your Donnie De Los Santos Purple Shimmer, 77 out of 250 for the Pirates. That'll be for Brian. Speaking of Bryce Harper, there he is. Yankil Fernandez for Aaron Miller in Colorado. Pirates, that's for Brian. And these Wander rookie cards will go to Dan in Tampa Bay. Let's see if we can find some parallels for him. That'd be pretty cool. Ooh, another redemption. And speaking of J.D. Martinez, there he is. James Triantos, 72 out of 125. Cubs, Joe. The Yasser Mercedes will go to Mark. Uh, N and the Twins. And the red re the redemp the redemption behind Mookie Betts is a Bowman Chrome Prospects autograph. No parallel. Good luck, everybody. Of of Alexis Hernandez for the Chicago Cubs, and that will be for Joe Joe S with that one. There you go, Joe. Joe to Joe Mojo. All right, we, have to, we have to take all of these, these rumors and reports with a grain of salt, right? I, I'm sure where there's a little smoke, there's fire. That's, that's true. But, you know... Be some gamesmanship between clubs and reporters and agents and reporters. But a, a source told Sports Illustrated's Pat Regazzo that the Dodgers have shown interest in the free agent slugger. His 16 homers last year were the fewest over a full season since 2013, but on the bright side, he did have 43 doubles. That is a good bounce back candidate situation for next year. There is some question about how well Martinez fits in the Dodgers' plans, though. Adding a right handed DH doesn't appear to be the Dodgers' top needs this offensive season. Their number three prospect, Miguel Vargas, is a DH type player who should receive more opportunity in 2023. There you go. I do think Miguel Vargas, guys like him, should get into more opportunities, really. I mean, the Dodgers have had such a vaunted farm system. Yeah, sure, they could trade some guys for maybe some starting pitching, maybe some of those Marlins guys, maybe a Corbin Burns, but, you know, let's try. Let's, their farm system's so good, why not develop the next J.D. Martinez, the next Aaron Judge, whatever. You know, Luis Rodriguez could be one of those guys. There's Jaron Duran Duran, 211 out of 4.99. And we got a gold speckle. Nice little color match there. Gold speckle autograph, 29 out of 50. 
Your Donnie De Los Santos. Nice. Now, rated as number 12 prospect in the 2020, 20, 2022 international class. A lot of twos there. It's for Brian B. and the Pirates. Duran goes to Chris and the Red Sox. Atomic Blaze Jordan also for Chris and the Red Sox. It's to 150. Oh, and another one of these little short prints. Sometimes we've seen two per case. They only generally fall one per case. We've got an extra one here. Nice one for the Cubs. Joe with the Cubs. little mini box and behind Matt Manning is a autograph for the White Sox Tanner McDougal Henry with the White Sox there you go Henry he's from uh, Vegas Henderson Nevada there's Hedbert Perez 16 out of 75 A lot of ball players just popping from Vegas, right? Joey Gallo, Bryce Harper, and Chris Bryant, I think. All right, two more boxes to go. Good luck, everyone. Another case. So this is Pick Your Team Sweet 16. 17 is in the store right now. And down to 24 teams. So it's most of the league still left. So if you're like, hey, I was going to get this team straight up. Someone else keeps buying them from me. You know, now's your chance to get your team, most likely. So jazbeescasebreaks.com. I think Instagram, personal breaks on, the, on Instagram Live, at jazbeescasebreaks.com may have some hobby boxes available for personal breaks as well if you'd like maybe some hta available too we do have hta in the store as well hta which is on uh which is in a team random filler jaspyscasebreaks.com Sunday night football game, Colts up 10-7 on Dallas at the probably the beginning, just a couple minutes into the second quarter. Good luck, everyone. Behind O'Neill Cruz, future teammate, maybe? Jack Herman, Pirates, Brian. Now, with the Pirates. I, I know a lot of I, the Pirates fans that have checked in with us here at Jaspies will often lament the fact that, yeah, we got these guys coming up the ranks, but, you know, they don't ever extend them. They end up trading them. Can never, it's a constant rebuild, you know, and because of that, you know, for, you know, then you lose out on free agents. They're not even chasing free agents. So you got a beautiful ballpark, one, one that I want to visit someday. I mean, if they, they got Cabrian Hayes, O'Neill Cruz, got some guys coming up the pipeline. There's Wilson Contreras to 499, Roger Garrias, Julio Rodriguez. They extend some guys, maybe, maybe make a little move or two in free agency in the next couple of years, you know? 
It's not like that division's scary, right? All right, there's Tanner McDougal, White Sox. It's for Henry. Christian Hernandez, 44 out of 150. Cubs for Joe. And Danny DeAndrade, 61 out of 99, Green Shimmer. That's for the Twins, it'll be for Mark. Yeah, it seems a little, seems, it feels a little Cubs heavy, right? Joe picked, Joe picked him right this time. All right. Final two boxes. Let's see what we've got in here. And another TD on the board for Dallas. Yeah, TJ looking for some Padres here. Just one time, right? Good luck. Two autographs, final two. Maybe, maybe some hits for the hit list. Good luck. go. We got Spencer Torkelson Refractor. Nice. 169 out of 499. And is this the auto spot? It is. It's for the Rays. It's Stanley Castillo for Dan in Tampa Bay. Nice seeing a parallel for these upper tier rookies here. Spencer Torkelson going to Jeremy and the Tigers. Got that auto earlier. So good break there. Another one for the Tigers. 128 out of 150. Jackson Joe Blue parallel. All right, next mini box, final auto. Final auto is going to be Blue Lava for the Mariners. 108 out of 150. That is for Gary. Last Pot Mojo. There you go. And let's see. Maybe. Ooh. Is that a red parallel for somebody? Behind Manny Machado, Red, Red Tiger, Roberto Campos, two out of five. Jeremy picking up the Tigers straight up and being rewarded with an out of five. And all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. The eighth leading Tiger prospect, according to MLB.com. Nice. Shades of Greatness, Jackson Merrill for the Padres, for TJ. But, and that, my friends, is that. For those of you who hit, congratulations. For those of you who didn't, We'll get them next time. I appreciate you trying. 
All right, let's do a quick little recap. That was the out of five you just saw. A lot of nice autos, some short prints, some cool parallels. Thanks everyone for making this happen. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Another case in the store. If you want to run this back. We started off with Charlie Welch, the Mariner. Thanks everyone. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com and I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.